Welcome everyone to EA Global Summit 2022. This is Juhi again from the EA Global Summit organizing team. Thanks to everyone for your continual interest and efforts for joining us for this session. This session is by Gillians from Spark Services UK presenting EA requirements use case masterclass. Kindly note that we will be muting all the participants throughout the session and if any of you are having any questions during the session, please use the Q&A window to drop your questions to the speaker. We will be reading out the questions to the speaker and she will be able to answer during the Q&A session at the end. To enable collaboration and communication with Gillian and other EA practitioners directly after the session, we request you to visit the dedicated channel for this session in Microsoft Teams. All presenters, including Gillian, have kindly accepted to stay in the channel to have an one-to-one -one discussion and answer your queries. The link to the MS Teams channel is posted in the chat window for your quick reference. If anyone is having any difficulty in connecting to Teams, please reach us in the chat window or write to us at registrations at eaglobalsummit.com. Thanks once again for your continual interest and support to EA Global Summit 2022. Looking forward to the wonderful session with Gillian. Over to Gillian. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to be invited back to present at the Sparks EA Global Summit 2022. Thanks to Judy, Nisam and all of the team for organising this event. So for my presentation today, I thought I would go back to basics and explore all of the features in Enterprise Architect for requirements capture use case modeling and traceability. I'm going to use our fictional flower power organization to explore these techniques. Times have been very tough for flower power recently. Traditionally, they focused on bulk flower sales to retail outlets and chain stores, but now there's an urgent need to diversify. The marketing team have identified a new business opportunity to sell directly to the general public. To make this possible, a new website is required. Our Flower Power business analysts are asked to document the requirements so that the development can be outsourced to a website development team. Our business analysts first interview the Flower Power sales and marketing teams to identify the functionality needed for their new website. They're going to use a very simple requirements diagram from the extended category of diagrams in Enterprise Architect to create um, textual statements of the end user needs and wishes. So far, they have captured that customers need some way to choose the flowers of interest. They need a variety of different mechanisms, including the ability to browse for flowers, search for flowers in the catalogue, and to view the current special offers. They've also considered that customers then need to be able to populate their virtual basket with flowers they have chosen, and of course, to purchase the flowers. Each of their functional requirements has a unique number and a short textual description. And then more details have been entered into the notes below. Now our BAs need to think about the sales team and their needs to be able to maintain the flower catalogue. The sales team explain that they need to be able to add or remove flowers. They also wish to be able to change the flower details. And our BAs can add additional requirements to reflect these needs. The managers also indicate that they wish to be able to set the flower prices and to define special offers that are available from time to time to promote certain flowers or flower combinations. Our BAs 
select all the new requirements, control click to select their existing requirement, and to make the diagram look a bit tidier, they make all the requirements the same height and width. They then align the new requirements to the left and space them evenly down the diagram. <laughs> Next, they can add relationships using the toolbox. They add an aggregation relationship. This is a whole part relationship in UML and allows them to connect their detailed requirements to the high level requirement. Again, the diagram's looking a little bit untidy with all of these separate lines. So our business analysts can right click on the relationship and change the line style to be a tree style horizontal. They can then right click again on the same line and apply this line style to all the connectors of the same type. And now we have a nice tidy diagram again. Our business analysts have reflected the nesting of the detailed requirements underneath the high level requirements in their project browser too. You can see over in the browser each high level requirement with the detailed requirements nested underneath. At this stage, it's handy to reflect the status of each of our requirements using the status property. On the dialog, the status can be chosen from a drop down list. And this is also accessible from a drop down list on the properties window. We wish to use our own vocabulary for these statuses. Some requirements have simply been proposed, others have been documented and then reviewed, and some have even been signed off by the business. Our business analysts can set up the vocabulary they wish to use for the status settings using the settings ribbon in Enterprise Architect. They go to model types, general types, and here the default proposed setting has a yellow color associated with it. They add their own documented setting set to red, reviewed set to purple, and signed off set to green. They can then click on the Applies To button, scroll down and verify that these uh, status settings can be applied to requirements and also tick a little box to apply those settings to use cases as well, which will be handy when they come to do the use case modeling later in the project. Now uh, we can go and turn the colors on to see those colors on the diagram. To do this, we go to the layout ribbon and we use the appearance menu and we can tick to show status colors on the diagram. These colors are then reflected in a sidebar on each of the requirements. A diagram legend can be added to the requirements diagram to explain to everyone what these different colors mean. The business analysts have created a diagram legend in the guidelines part of their browser. We can drag and drop the legend onto the requirements diagram. The legend has a name at the top and then in the item area, we have entered each of the possible values for status, proposed and associated that with the appropriate fill color, 
saved all of the different options down below. To impress their manager, the BAs decide to add a pie chart to show the status of each of the requirements. This can be achieved by going to the menu at the top of the toolbox and changing to the dashboard toolbox. They then select elements by status and click on the requirements diagram. Navigate to the functional requirements package and a pie chart is added. They need to make sure that they add an element filter to ensure that it's only the requirements objects that are being displayed in the pie chart. And tick to make this a required filter. And then on the appearance page, we can change the appearance, make the pie fill the full area and add a display legend onto the pie chart too. So now we've got a nice chart that the managers can glance at and see immediately that 50% of our requirements have already been signed off. It's a great start, but of course, our business analysts uh, know that later in the project, they can use a Prolaborate dashboard and set up some much fancier interactive graphs and charts. And this will allow them to share their model on a browser with a much wider stakeholder audience. Functional requirements are saved. And now our BAs turn their attention to capturing some of the obvious non-functional requirements. Of course, they're going to discover many more as the analysis progresses and they start to document the, the use case scenarios. They can use the EA settings to define their own requirements types. Again, in the general types dialog, on the requirements page, they've set up high level, functional, NFR for their non-functional requirements, and business rules as the different types of requirements. Each requirement has a type dropdown on the dialog to allow you to select an appropriate requirement type. Or in the properties window, you can see this as a stereotype, a specialized type of requirement. Our non-functional requirements allow us to express any constraints that influence the website design. Now this might include performance, reliability, security, quality, usability, regulatory, and even environmental statements. For example, how quickly do they expect to get results from a search? Or what are the security implications of handling personal details and storing financial details? Enter Enterprise Architect allows the business analysts to view and interact with requirements in a number of different formats, not just as a diagram. They can switch their view to a specification view. And this allows them to preview what might appear in any generated documentation. And it's a great way of spotting missing descriptions or even spelling mistakes. You can right click on the heading and open up a little field chooser. 
and this allows you to determine which properties to display in the columns. You can add or remove columns very easily. Another option is to right click and switch the view to a list view. The list view is fantastic for filtering and grouping our requirements. For example, we could filter to only see the non-functional requirements appearing on this diagram. And using the heading, we could drag our status heading up into the gray area at the top and group all the requirements by their status. And of course, at any time, we can switch the view back to the graphical view. Our business analysts also wish to consider whether there are any business rules that need to be incorporated into the website design. Business rules can be created using a requirements element with an appropriate type property. We set these to have the business rule type. A business rule is a statement that's governed by business decisions and policies. And these are therefore aspects of our design that are subject to change from time to time. It's very important for the website design team to be aware of these and to build these in a configurable way. Now you'll notice um, that our business rules are not currently numbered. There's no unique identifier associated with these. We can set up auto numbering in EA. From the settings ribbon, we can choose auto numbers and counters, and we can then define for each element type an auto numbering policy. In fact, in version 16 of Enterprise Architect, you can define different auto numbers for different stereotypes. You'll see that we have entered a prefix FP for flower power and BR for business rule. And we will set the counter to start at one. And then we can save this auto countering schema. If we have a number of requirements that have not yet been auto numbered, we can actually set the auto numbering on all of those at the same time. We would simply find the package that contains the business rules, go to the design ribbon, and from the manage menu, we can choose auto naming. This allows us to select all of our existing business rules and apply the auto numbering automatically to those, all in one go. Our Flower Power business analysts also wanted to store some custom properties with each of their requirements. And we're able to facilitate this by using a template package which they've created as part of their project guidelines. They created a template diagram and added an example requirement and an example use case into the template. In Enterprise Architect, custom properties can be added as tagged values. In the properties window, we click on the tags tab and we can define our own custom properties. The little button in the toolbar that looks like three little tags 
If we click on that, it takes us straight to the dialogue where we can define our own custom properties. Our business analysts have created a Moscow proper priority as a custom property so that they can apply this to both their requirements and their use cases. You will see um, that they've used a special code in the detail box to make this a list of predefined values. Type equals enum. They can then indicate the values that can be assigned, must have, should have, could have, and wish to have. And set the default to be should have. We then have to instruct Enterprise Architect to use this template. From the settings ribbon, we can choose project template package. Navigate and find our template package. And now EA knows whenever we create a new requirement or whenever we create a new use case to automatically add this additional property. Of course, uh, there may be some requirements that don't yet have this property added. And in our case, um, our business rules were created first and they do not have this tagged value. So we can rubber band to select all of the business rules. And then we can right click on one of them and use the context menu to add the tagged value to all of them at the same time. If I type in M, it will take me straight to that tag value. And you'll see that the default should have value is applied. And now we can individually select our business rules and set the value to the appropriate one. So we want to have um, a minimum purchase price as a must have and a minimum purchase volume will also be a must have and then the seasonal flower availability we're going to leave that as a wish to have. Now our business analysts may well want to see this information on their diagram. There's a couple of different ways of doing this. One option is to add the tagged values as an extra compartment onto the diagram. We can do this by clicking on the background of our diagram. And this um, means that the diagram properties are displayed in the properties window. We can then click on the compartments tab and tick a box to display an extra compartment on each of our requirements showing the Moscow priority. Another option, if they wish to see more properties on the requirements, is to change the appearance of these requirements and to enable the info view. Again, rubber band to select them all right click and from appearance we can enable info view again right click on any and from appearance we can set the info view properties and this allows us to determine which bits of information we would like to have displayed on the diagram we can then resize one of our business rules, select them all and make them all the same height and width. So our Flower Power business analysts are now satisfied that the most important requirements, non-functional requirements and business rules 
have been captured and properly documented. And now they can turn their attention to developing the use case model. Generally, the first step in developing a use case model is to create an actor catalogue. Actors can be used to model any external entity that needs to interact with the system of interest. And more widely, uh, this can be extended to include any stakeholders with an interest or an influence on our system. Human actors reflect the roles of system users. So for our Flower Power website, the main actor will be the customer. But our business analysts also reflect that the Flower Power sales team will be an actor as well, as they need to be able to maintain the flower catalog on the website. The flower power managers have expressed that they wish to control prices and special offers. So our business analysts need an actor to represent their role as well. Using the toolbox, they can add Flower Power Manager as an additional role. And following best practice, they can add a description into the notes area. Now it's sometimes nice to have those descriptions on the actor catalog. One way of achieving this is to attach a note to the actor. We can right click on the Flower Power Manager actor and add a new child element, a note. And then the magic bit is to right click on the link line between the two and to link the note to an element feature. This allows us to extract information out of the manager actor, in this case, the description, and put that onto our diagram. The BAs realize that it's useful to have an inheritance relationship a generalization relationship between the Flower Power Manager and the sales team actor. This indicates that a manager can act as a sales team member and they can access all of the use cases that are connected to the sales team. As well as human actors, we can have actors to model any external systems that our new website needs to exchange information with. Our business analysts have already added the Flower Power Stock Control System as a system actor. And they can change this to use the rectangle look and feel to differentiate it from the human actors. Likewise, we can have um, a timer actor. A timer actor uh, is used when functionality is triggered automatically by the system at a point in time. So our business analysts anticipate that a weekly timer could trigger marketing messages to tell customers about new special offers. They've added the weekly timer actor and again, choose to use the rectangle notation for the timer actor as well. So having populated the actor catalog, our business act analysts um, can start to build their use case models. They focus firstly 
on those use cases that are relevant to the customer interaction with the website. On the use case diagram, a system boundary helps to give the diagram a very clear focus. It represents our system of interest. In this case, the new Flower Power website. The business analyst can drag actors from the actor catalogue onto the use case diagram. And choose to drop as a link. This means that they are reusing the actors from the catalog rather than creating new ones. So again, with the stock control system, it's dropped as a link and we switch to the rectangle look and feel. Each of our primary use cases represents an end user goal, an objective from the point of view of our actor. And these use cases are expressed as a verb followed by a noun. That would be best practice. So the business analysts put their shoes into the customer actor and think about what a customer would expect and need from this new website. This analysis, of course, will be assisted by referring back to our functional requirements captured earlier. So we know that customers need a mechanism to be able to choose flowers. And we can add a use case to reflect that. Every use case represents a dialogue back and forth between the actor and the system. You'll note that we have placed the actor outside the system boundary, and that's because they're an external user of the system. And then the use case is placed inside the system boundary. It's a feature that the system supports. We can use our toolbox to add an association relationship from the actor to the use case. And we're using the arrowhead convention here. This indicates who triggers the conversation. So if the arrowhead points from the actor to the use case, it indicates that the actor triggers the dialogue. So in this case, the customer uses the website and triggers the conversation to choose their flowers. Customers will then wish to populate their, their virtual basket. So we can add another use case to represent this and an association from the customer to that use case. Now, when we add um, flowers into the basket, first of all, we need our customer to choose their flowers. So we can actually use an include relationship to connect these two use cases together. An include relationship is used where there are common steps in two or more primary use cases. So in this situation, choose flowers is both its own primary use case, but it's also part of the add flowers use case as well. The next step, of course, is for our customer to purchase their flowers. When purchasing flowers, sometimes a customer may opt to repeat a previous order. To reflect this, our business analysts add 
a repeat order use case and then add an extend relationship back to the purchase flowers use case. An extend relationship is used where there are alternate steps to follow, particularly when there's a significant exception or even a less common feature that's required. Referring back to the functional requirements, it's very clear that there are a number of different ways of choosing flowers. And the business analyst can reflect this by adding additional use cases to browse the flowers, search for flowers, and view the special offers. They can then use a generalized relationship to indicate that these are all alternative specialized ways of choosing flowers. Our BAs can complete populating the use case diagram adding the ability to remove flowers from the basket or even update the order or perhaps even cancel an order. They also need to reflect when the backend control system will be accessed and can add associations to indicate which use cases will communicate with the backend control system. With um, the customer use case model populated, our business analysts can turn their attention to the sales team and the use cases that they may require. As you can see, they have already populated some of this use case model and can now add the manager into the model, the inheritance relationship, is reflected straight away and they can add association relationships to the manager use cases to set the flower prices and specify the special offers. You'll notice that our business um, analysts are able to reuse the same status colors on the use case model as they did on their requirements diagrams. However, the colors show up um, as a shadow on the use case um, notation. And that's very subtle and perhaps a little bit difficult to see. So to make these colors stand out on their diagram, our business analysts change the diagram legend to apply an auto color. They filter to the element status property. And then the various um, options for element status will now auto color the fill color of the use cases themselves. So this makes it much easier for everyone to interpret the status of the use cases. So with their use case models populated, our business analysts have a nice clear understanding of the scope of the system and the priorities and the status of each of their use cases. 
And this allows them to take a more agile approach, analysing the top priority use cases first. They return to the customer use case model and start to document the scenario descriptions for each of the must-have use cases. If we double click on a use case in version 16, it automatically opens up the scenario editor for us. We can then drag that window and dock it side by side with our use case diagram. As we can see, the business analysts have entered the basic path for the search for flowers use case. It's a numbered list of steps representing the normal dialogue between the actor and the website in order to achieve the goal of searching for flowers. EA automatically adds a little icon just to the side of each step to reflect who undertakes that step, whether it's an actor or the system. And if EA guesses wrong, then we can simply go in and double click to toggle the icon. So this would be our normal scenario, but of course there could be exception and alternate paths. And these would be used to explain any deviations or additional steps needed in more unusual circumstances. For example, um, at step five, our website is presenting a list of the matching flowers. But what if there are no matching flowers? Well, we can enter an alternate path to say that no flowers have been found. And then we can double click on the alternate path down here, and we can enter the additional steps that need to be taken in that situation. Going back to our basic path, we can use a join point to indicate where in the basic path we rejoin. To help the business understand the logic of the use case and of all the alternative and exception paths, our BAs can use Enterprise Architect to automatically generate an activity diagram. My recommendation would be the activity with action option, as this will allow them to update the activity diagram and make changes to it more easily. You can see that all the steps in the use case are reflected in the diagram, including any alternate paths, and the rejoin points to the basic path are shown as well. And further down, an additional alternate path is shown. Our business analysts can also generate a test case diagram, um, and this will provide an excellent start point for the acceptance testing team. Again, my recommendation would be to generate an external test case. This creates a separate test case element in the model pre-populated with all the different possible scenario tests. The acceptance test team can then document their expected outcomes and indicate when these tests have been run and whether they were passed or failed. Our use case model is typically focused more on the functional aspects of our system. But it's essential, very important, to cross-reference the non-functional and the business rules to ensure that the website developers implement these as well. 
our business analysts can benefit from a super quick mechanism in Enterprise Architect, which allows them to relate the requirements to the use cases simply by dragging and dropping requirements from the project browser on top of each use case. For example, if we open the properties of Search for Flowers, click on the requirements page, you'll see there are no requirements currently associated with this use case. So we can go to the project browser, open up the requirements packages, and drag and drop the relevant requirements on top of that use case. So we will drag the high level functional requirement across and the more detailed functional requirement. We can also bring across non-functional requirements too. So we want an intuitive website navigation and we want search results quite fast. And we have a business rule about seasonal flower availability that we would like the search feature to take account of. So we drag and drop each of these on top of our use case. And then if we go back into the properties dialog, we can see that the functional, non-functional and business rule requirement elements are now listed as requirements associated with this use case. And in fact, if we click on the links page, we can see that a realization relationship has been created from the use case to the requirements automatically just by dragging and dropping the requirement on top of the use case. Now, with all of these connections in our model, we can make great use of the traceability window. On the start ribbon, we can go to the design button and choose to open our traceability window. This is one of my favorite windows in the EA tool. If we click on an actor, we can see all of the use cases connected to that actor. And if we click on a use case, we can see that this use case is part of a high level use case. We can see all the functional requirements it's implementing, the business rules, the non-functional requirements. And in fact, in this case, a test case that has been auto-generated for this use case as well. Now, to ensure that the website developers are aware of all the related requirements, our business analysts decide to create a traceability diagram. They can drag and drop the high priority use cases onto this diagram. And then they can right click and use insert related elements to find all the connected elements in the model. They can tick to bring on the functional requirements, the business rules, the non-functional requirements, and even the test case into the diagram. And simply reposition the requirements to tidy the diagram up and make it a little bit easier to read. And this gives the developers quite a comprehensive understanding of the use case and all the requirements that it needs to meet.
The relationship matrix in Enterprise Architect gives another great way to visualize connections between elements in our model. Here um, we have a matrix profile where we have added the requirements as the source and they appear down the left hand side of the matrix. We've then added our use cases as our target and they are appearing across the top of the matrix. The green arrows are representing the realization relationships that exist between use cases and requirements. It's a very succinct way of cross-referencing elements in the model and also for checking for completeness. Our business analysts can use the options, tick a couple of boxes here and they can highlight any elements that don't have a relationship. They'll then see um, blue lines and pink columns wherever um, no relationship exists. And this lets them quickly spot any gaps in the model and potentially add additional relationships into the model. So view, for, view special offers is not currently connected to any requirements. We can right click to indicate that it needs an intuitive website navigation. We can also indicate that this is one of the mechanisms for choosing flowers. And of course, connect it to our detailed requirement all about special offers. And that gives us a complete matrix. So that brings me uh, to the end of today's presentation. I'm hoping that it's been a, an insight, especially for potentially newer users of Enterprise Architect, um, about the features and support that there is for requirements capture, use case modeling, and of course, traceability. And if you'd like to learn more, um, about um, Enterprise Architects, support for UML and, and SysML. We have, of course, a, a wide range of training modules on these topics, and we'd invite you to visit our website to find out, out about our public webinars and the schedule of those. Um, or, of course, um, I'm very happy to take some questions just now or answer any questions that you have on the Teams channel. So I'll hand back to Judy just to see if there have been any any questions that you would like answered straight away. Yeah, yeah, uh, Glenn, we have a lot of questions for you. I'll just ask a couple of simple questions for, for you to answer here quickly. The first one is, um, uh, will the recording be available for download? Uh, for, yes, it's it will be made available online in our YouTube channel in our eaglobalsummit.com website. All registrants will be notified via email when it when it's made available. Maybe we you can expect the videos available by early next week. Now for you, Gillian, um, the question from James: Can scenarios scenario steps be generated from an activity diagram? Yes, uh, you can in fact do that. Um, you could uh, just add maybe a couple of steps into your scenario, generate the activity diagram, and then go to that activity diagram and add additional steps in the diagram itself or modify the steps in the diagram. And you can then synchronize uh, the diagram view with the textual description. So go back to the scenario and synchronize with the diagram and it will import all the steps that you have on your activity diagram. Or you can do vice versa. You can um, update the scenario textual description 
and then um, use that to update the diagram. So you can keep those two synchronized, yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the, another question from John. Can you control which type of relationship is created when requirements are dragged onto use cases? No, I don't believe you can. I think it's automatically a realized relationship that gets created for you. And um, that's the most common relationship to have between requirements and, and use cases. Of course, um, if you wanted a different relationship, you could um, populate those manually yourself or perhaps use um, a relationship matrix to quickly populate those, um, you know, just using the, the matrix to enter those different relationships. Thank you, Claire. And one more question from Michael. Is this model available to download from your website? Not at the moment. Um, we can possibly uh, look, look to make it available, um, but it's more the, the video that we thought that would be most useful for people just to refer back to and see how things are done. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, uh, one more quick question. How could we make a link between use case and the user story? So um, for user stories, they are, I suppose, very uh, simple, straightforward use cases. Um, you can have, um, there is a built-in user story um, notation in the Sparks uh, toolboxes, which could be used instead of a use case. Or you can simply create um, a user story as a special stereotype of a use case um, and then add tagged values to hold the different um, parts of the user story, the different properties that you would require. Um, and I guess those could then be uh, linked up with, with actors um, instead of a, a normal use case. Yeah, thank you, Glim. I have a couple more questions for you too, but I'll just post those questions in MS Teams. I have long questions from John during the initial hour of the session, uh, but you may need to deep dive into that question to answer. So better you please refer to MS Teams. Um, and a couple more questions from Johan. Good comments from the participants. Thank you, Gillian. Thank you uh, for providing the wonderful session. You always uh, nail it. Uh, like every year. Thank you so much. It's been fun uh, again this year, and I'd be delighted to go across to Teams and to answer any additional questions that anyone might have. And of course, for people to reach out to me there or just by uh, email or you know come to our website if you have any additional uh, questions that you'd like to ask. Yeah, people will definitely reach you out to for you know to continue the conversation. Fantastic, and thank you so yeah. much, Judy. Yeah, thank you. I'll wait. Where, I'll wait here in the go to webinar to receive more questions, and then I'll just close the webinar. So thanks once again, Gillian. Thanks to everyone for your time during this session. As mentioned, videos of all sessions of this year event will be made available in our website, eaglobalsummit.com, Spark Systems Prolaborate YouTube channel, Spark Systems HQ YouTube channel. All the registrants will be notified via email when it's made available. You can expect those videos by early next week. Now, Gillian will be available in MS Teams to have a detailed discussions and answer more questions in Microsoft Teams. The link to Microsoft Teams is pasted in the chat window for your quick reference. We will be, the organizers will be available for you to uh, provide any assistance if you have any difficulties in reaching the MS Teams. If anyone is having any difficulties, please reach us at immediately or uh, write to us at registrations at eaglobalsummit.com. Thanks once again, everyone, and looking forward to hosting you all in another wonderful session at the summit shortly. Thank you. Thanks, Gillian. Thanks, all.